I am Karan Bhatia speaking with Polly Malinaji. Polly, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. So you are going to be fighting in celebrity boxing. Uh, you're taking yeah. on Corey B., uh, who's had success on uh, TikTok and elsewhere on social media, radio host. Um, but not in boxing. He's had success, but not in boxing. Not in, in boxing. He took up boxing as a way to uh, lose weight. Um, and then there seemed to be a little bit of back and forth between you guys. And then he slapped you with some powder. Um, yeah. well, so I, I feel like I feel like boxing has become the trendy workout for a lot of these uh, <laughs> these nitwits, you know. So so uh, you know they they start to get it confused between uh, the reality and the, and the, and the uh, just the workout. You know they start to just, you know it's just because I play catch at the park regularly doesn't mean I can now go in the NFL. You know, it's, uh, but that seems to be the case when people start to. Uh, box regularly in the gym they start to feel that they can uh you know put themselves on certain pedestals <laughs> and, and he just, said sorry, he, he was he, he was working out to get in shape and he's in his words he said paulie wanted clout he called up my morning show uh j you know he, he wanted clout you, what would be your response to Corey saying that and it wasn't cloud. It was, uh, you know, I listened to the morning show. He's got a good show and, uh, you know, it's funny, funny stuff, you know, over there, on Corey and Kane and Corey. But um, I just, when it got to boxing, I was, I've, I've already been complaining about the YouTube generation, Instagram generation sort of coming into boxing. It's, it's become like their own trendy thing, you know? And, and so it's kind of taken away from the legitimacy of the sport that we've had, you know, and there's, there's a lot of world-class, extremely good fighters there that, you know, people won't pay attention to their fight, but they'll pay attention to this dumbed down version of a TikTok fight, you know? And uh, I don't know if that goes to, to you know, explain how the stupidity of the generation or if it's just because ignorance can't appreciate the world-class level. I don't know. But nonetheless, he starts talking the same way. And I'm like, oh man, not another one. Please, not another one. You know, this is getting out of hand. So I, I got, I called and I surprisingly, I got through. Cause you know, sometimes you call these radio stations and you don't get through. And I got through. And uh, once I got through, we had a, uh, we had our little uh, words, our words, you know. You had your words, and then you were commentating a celebrity boxing match, Lamar Odom and Aaron Carter, yeah. and, and he came up was, behind you and slapped was, you with some powder, yeah. right? Funny thing was, he said he was going to be there, and I, I, I mean, I knew he was going to be there, I guess, but like, I, I, it didn't cross my mind anymore. Like, you know, we'd had the argument on the radio, and then that was it. And then, you know, I'm working the show, and, you know, I. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to run into him. It's an arena. I'm by the ring working. I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, stuck by ringside anyway. I can't walk around. You know, I've got to call the fights. So he wasn't on my mind, honestly. I completely, completely wasn't even on my mind. Like, I'd totally forgotten about the whole fiasco. And then all of a sudden, I get this slap, and I'm in the middle of a broadcast, and I get this slap on the back of my neck. And I turn around to see, like, who in the world just slapped me. And I turn around, and sure enough, there he is right there. And I, and I right away, I'm like, oh, my God, it's him, you know? So it's like my instinct was just to run at him. But I think by the time he had already gotten through security and, and, and slapped me, I think the bouncers had already gotten a head start on him. So by the time I got to him, they got to him too. It was a little bit of, a little bit of a fiasco. And, and to be fair, you know, sometimes in, in boxing or in, in other sports, there can be things that are staged. This looked pretty real. This, this was completely real in terms of him slapping this, you and you charging at him, right? This was real. And not only that, it was also a, a situation where, like I said, I, I hadn't even thought about the fact that he'd be there. You know, like he said he'd be there when we argued. But like that was, you know, it, you, know you, get, you, you say things and then you're like, whatever. Like, you know, it's, it, it, it crossed my mind. I remember earlier that day thinking like, hmm, I wonder if he's going to be there. But then by the time I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on the work, I'm focusing on the task at hand, which is, you know, memorize the fighters fighting tonight and get their background and all this stuff. I get to, I get to the show. I'm not thinking about it anymore. And honestly, like I said, I'm, I'm by ringside. I, I, I totally, it, was, it wasn't even on my mind anymore. I, I, if the night would have went through and I probably wouldn't have thought about it until the next day. Oh, I wonder if that kid was even there. But no, I didn't have to wonder because this kid showed up and slapped me. I don't know how security got through, how security let him through though because he got into the corral. You have to get into the corral to get, um, to, get to the announcers. And so when he, by him getting already through there, that's all another reason why security was also there probably before me. Because by the time I got to him, if you notice the, in the mail, I don't know if you've seen the video, the security team is also there grabbing him as well and separating us. So I think they were already probably on their way to taking him out as soon as he got in there and slapped me, you know? So by the time I got there, they had already got a head start. So I didn't get to really dig into him like I wanted to. So that'll be my chance tomorrow night to do that instead.
and and you're fighting tomorrow night it's celebrity boxing it's on fight tv so let me ask you this you're a trained fighter you fought at the highest possible level championship level campaigned at welterweight for so long he's not a trained fighter how do you expect this fight to go well first of all i don't know if you've ever seen the movie gray white hype with damon waynes uh, I, that's probably how I trained for this fight, uh, with the exception of the, the past week. The past week, I've gone in the gym. If anybody has seen my social media, you know, I've, I've trained. I've been in the gym the past week, and I've worked out. I've, uh, I got together with be actually uh, uh, UFC legend Vitor Belfort uh, this past week, and been working out with him. And uh, but that's about it. <laughs> Aside from the past week, I didn't even you know, consider this uh, a typical uh, preparation for a fight. I've been living my own life, doing my own thing, you know? Uh, and uh, I... That's pretty much how I intend. To, I intend for it to show up, and I intend. I intend for it to be. And and when I show up, I intend to, you know, put put a hurting on him, just like Damon Wayans did in the movie The Great White Hype after not training for the fight. You know, uh, that's that's pretty much my intention. We'll see. But I I also think that you know the the rule set is there to make sure there's not the, the sorry. Are you there? Yeah, I can hear you now. Go yeah. ahead. The rule set is there to make sure there's not any hardcore damage involved, you know, because boxing is dangerous. Of course, they've got bigger gloves on us. They've got headgears on us. So I'm thinking, how am I going to teach this kid a lesson when the rule set kind of protects him? So I've got to get to the body. I've got to get to the body. I've got to show – and really, a lot of times, the, the, the person ignorant to boxing doesn't understand how, how debilitating body shots can be. So I'm going to tell you straight up my plan is to really wreck him to the body and see if I can uh, force him to take a knee or force him to go down from body shots. And, and that was my next question. Your official prediction on the record for this fight would be what? Uh, I'd love for it to be established to the body. The rounds are short. Uh, the, the, the fight is short. Uh, like I said, there's a rule set that does protect everybody so that there's not any hospitalization type of damage. So you hope so. You hope not. Because at the end of the day, it's still competition, right? Uh, we're in the hurt. This is, this is the hurt business. You don't play boxing, of course. You've got some of these guys trying to start to play boxing, but they're trying to let them play boxing while within a, a safer rule set, right? But I feel like if I can get to his body, I feel like I could suffocate him and uh, force him to take a knee and then stop him to the body. So my, my intention is to force the stoppage to the body. And so that's tomorrow night. It's Celebrity Boxing on Fight TV. And that, that is going to be an interesting card. I wanted to ask you, also ask you about a couple other things going on in the world of boxing. So in this case, you said TikTokers, YouTubers, Instagrams, are, it's, it's getting out of hand. Uh, you said any jerk that starts off boxing can now demand a fight. Um, so I'm yeah. curious, you know, obviously you mentioned Vitor Belfort. He called out Jake Paul. It seems like everyone's calling out Jake Paul. What, what are your thoughts on Jake Paul? Um, you know, there's pros and cons with Jake Paul. Uh, there, I noticed with his fight with Tyron Woodley, I was really paying attention. I haven't really paid attention to him before that. I, funny enough, I was at his pro debut because it was in Miami, and I was at the show where Demetrius Andre defended his title against Luke Keeler, and Jake Paul was in the co-main event. So I got to, I accidentally got already got to pay attention to Jake Paul's professional boxing career before it was ever a thing, right? And I noticed at that first show I went to, when it's his debut fight, uh, I was there for Demetrius Andre. A lot of the crowd left after after Jake Paul won the fight, you know, like his fight. And they didn't stay for the world-class boxing. They didn't stay for the, you know, the main event. I mean, I believe in the co-main event because that night, uh, uh, Jojo Diaz defeated Kevin Farmer in a world super, super featherweight title fight as well. Uh, and that was the two world-class fighters that were fighting. And so I was like, okay, this is a, a bit of a moronic crowd. That was a dumb fight to stay for and then leave for, you know? Um, and then I didn't watch his last couple of fights. I know he, nah, I saw the highlights of the Aspen fight. Uh, I saw the highlights of, uh, of the, I, I, mean, I, I, I caught, I caught some of the Dane Robinson uh, show because uh, I, I saw, I think I saw the Tyson pay-per-view and I was on the Tyson pay-per-view, but I mean, it's, listen, he's improving. He's improving. But I don't know if it's necessarily good for boxing because, like I said, these boxing, these fans, they, they kind of leave when the real boxing comes on. Now, the thing I paid attention to last fight when he fought Woodley was there was an entire crowd that looked to me like a crowd not typical of boxing. Younger, uh, um, the, the, the white crowd in the United States kind of has gone away from boxing and gone to more to MMA. So I like that White America was in, was in the arena for a boxing event. You know, I like to see that because I think you need – all cultures involved uh, when it comes to uh, maximizing the promotion of a sport. Um, and I think white America had really gone away from boxing in the past decade or two. Uh, so I noticed a crowd that typically wasn't typical of your boxing crowd, right? When Jake Paul was there uh, fighting for the Woodley fight. So I thought like this could possibly be good. And they stayed the whole show. So 
So maybe he's bringing a crowd that maybe wasn't knowledgeable of boxing, but maybe now they'll be knowledgeable in boxing. I'm not quite sure. We'll see. And, and that is the question, right? I mean, uh, he has been uh, vocal about fighters' pay, um, helped with fighters' pay, and some fighters have been elevated, like Amanda Serrano and others who've been fighting on his undercard. Um, so, we'll, so we'll see how it, how it plays out. You, you, I know that you were critical of Ben Askren when he fought him. Um, I, think, I, think what, I think what Jake, I got to say, what Jake has done there, uh, if he's uh, – what I saw, if I, that list that I saw, if he really upped everybody's pay on that undercard, I think that's terrific. Because that, that's things that nobody else is doing. You know, literally, guys that are making even more money than Jake doing. So, from that from that point of view, I I I have to give Jake a lot of credit. Now, do I think he's got world class potential in boxing? I do not. I think when I finally got to see him boxing a few rounds, you know, he's decently capable, but you know, he's a long, long, long way from from a world class level, and it's just not. And it's just very, very difficult to navigate your way through a career this way. But I think he can be a little bit. I wouldn't say a sideshow, but I think he can be a, a a guy who generates a lot of attention and can maybe bring positive attention. And the fact that he's doing well to pay those fighters that are deserving on the undercard of him, maybe he'll be a good manager. Maybe he can be a good promoter. You know, Jake seems like a good businessman. I, I think that could be the and the avenue for him. You know, uh, as opposed to fighting and putting himself at risk, where I just don't see him being that good. And and speaking of uh, YouTubers and fighting, you, you campaigned at the at the welterweight uh, division for a long time. Uh, obviously, at the top for a long time was Floyd Mayweather. Were you surprised that Floyd Mayweather fought Jake's brother Logan Paul? No, no. I think uh, we're in a very gimmicky uh, generation where a lot of things are that weren't really that popular before are starting to become popular. I think there's a curiosity for the fighters of yesteryear by today's uh, younger people. They want to see those fighters yes year so the retired generation the sort of the senior circuit is making a lot of money in boxing and and then you have this uh, youtube generation you know uh i am not in this generation so they i i can't really relate to what they interest them and a lot of things that, that interest them to me are a little bit weird um uh if you call me a boomer you, to me it's a compliment i don't want to be part of this generation i think they're corny but nonetheless you know you have to still um you have to still um uh, pay attention to what they like and uh, give them what they want because, uh, you know, they're a paying customer and a paying customer always needs to be respected. And, and uh, speaking of other fighters um, in UFC and then boxing, um, we know that you had the sparring sessions uh, with Connor and, and there was a lot made of that. Uh, when Connor lost to Poirier for the second time, uh, when he got knocked out, you, 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 you uh, on Instagram, you put up something that said, good night, everyone. I'm just curious, your thoughts of the third fight that he had with Poirier where he, we hurt his ankle. What did you think of that fight for Connor? Um, I think the ankle was a blessing for him, honestly. I think the ankle was a blessing. He was going to quit that fight too. He was uh, on his way to quitting again. As you saw, he's uh, you know just against the cage, taking a beating. Um, Connor doesn't want to be in a tough fight. He's never had the ability to be in a tough fight. I, I Don't tell me it's the money because this guy – Anytime he found himself in a tough fight, even in his prime, um, he uh, was always looking for a way out. The Nate Diaz fight was in his prime. I'm sorry to tell you guys. You know, it was before he made all this money. Yes, he'd made decent money, but it was before he made all this crazy money. And sure enough, Nate Diaz, after he had such a great first round, he shot in at Nate Diaz. The last thing you want to do against a, guy, a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He shot in at Nate Diaz and put himself in a position to be choked out. Not Conor McGregor, a guy who doesn't have any ground game at all. Shot in at Nate Diaz at the black belt in jiu-jitsu because he wanted out of that fight. So I, I recognized him before I ever met him. This guy had no character, hence why the uh, no bulls, uh, you know, hashtag that I had had going. Um, he doesn't have any bulls. He still doesn't have any bulls. Uh, uh, the more proof you want, more proof. Um, a 60-year-old man turns him down for a shot, he hits him. Uh, uh, a kid in Miami wants a selfie, uh, puts a phone in his face, he smashes it. I get in his face, tell him he has no balls, he doesn't do a thing. You understand? No character. Because when you know you're going to get punched in the mouth and you have consequences for it, you think twice. And if you actually have to think twice about it, then you don't actually have a temper. You are manipulative and you can think about it. Because if, you ha if anybody with a temper doesn't have any control anywhere, if he, didn't have any, if he, had, if he actually had a temper, there would have been an exchange of blows when I got in his face and told him he had no balls at that Mayweather at that Mayweather McGregor uh, uh, grand arrival that um, that I had that I had the face to face with him. Uh, so it's all an act. Um, I think now with time having gone by and um, and uh, people having separated from it, uh, being able to see 
his actions through the years since then. I think most people now are um, are uh, understanding and know what really happened at this point. You know, like I think I think at first maybe more skeptical, like oh, I wonder what really happened. You know, these are the highlights and all the other stuff. But now, if you look at his his um, routine, his uh, pa- behavior pattern you realize like, oh, this guy really does have no balls. Wow, this guy really does have no character. Wow, this guy really, you know, he gets his ass kicked by Dustin Poirier and then he has his butt kicked by Dustin Poirier and then he's putting up a highlight reel of him punching Poirier in the face on his Instagram account, you know, even though he got beat up from pillar to post in the fight. Like, after that, I remember after the second fight they had. So you kind of start to see through the cracks um, and I think anybody now with any logic kind of uh, understands it, but there's a lot of blowhards. There's a lot of... Uh, it's a lot of groupies out there. So, but you know, I think more people with a logical brain know what happened at this point. And and only a couple more uh, questions before I let you go. We we talked about uh, fighters in the welterweight division. Manny Pacquiao recently called it a career. Your your thoughts on Manny Pacquiao retiring? Um, long career. Um, a guy who has brought a lot of attention to the sport of boxing. Uh, I'd say probably most of it was positive. Um, yes, there's some been uh, some controversial things that I've said about him. I probably still believe them but I, I at this point boxing is probably filled with that so you can't just pinpoint Manny Pacquiao when it comes to that kind of controversy because I think boxing is fraught with that kind of problem and uh, if nobody's gonna go fix it then you are you know you can't kind of pinpoint just one guy you know and um, I think that's probably what I have learned uh, th- through the years is probably um, I, sh- I, sh- I shouldn't have went after just one guy like that you know but at the time in my in my own ignorance should I say innocence ignorance I was thinking oh this is a clean sport and this is a guy who you know to me is clearly not clean um but now when you look at it um in full effect again with many years of experience that I didn't have at that time I'd say you know the guys who aren't who are clean in the sport is, are probably in the minority not the majority so uh, you can't just go after Manny Pacquiao and say oh, well, you shouldn't credit him because he's not clean or supposedly he's not clean or allegedly he's not clean or whatever, you know. Uh, I think you've got to give the man credit um, under the circumstances and under the circumstances that everybody fought under. But everybody had the same rule set and everybody had the same lack of – and there was the same – there there is the same lack of enforcement when it comes to those rules. So I, that's why a lot more guys are doing it than I, than I may have thought of, I may have thought of at that point. When you put it all into consideration – He's still a great fighter, so you've got to give him credit, and you've got to give credit to the for the uh, positivity that he brought to the sport and the positive image that he brought to the sport. And, and speaking of great fighters, in 2014, you fought Sean Porter. He is now going to be fighting Terrence Crawford. Uh, this is a big matchup for the welterweight division. What do you think about that fight, and, and who do you think is going to win that fight? Um, you know, it's an interesting fight. It's stylistically, uh, it's a guy who gets in Crawford's face um, and uh, is bigger than Crawford, right? I mean, that's uh, what's supposed to, uh, you know, make a physical difference a lot of times and, and cause issues and problems. Um, sometimes the skilled smaller man will come up against the, the physical big man. The physical big man will kind of rough him up and the, the skills of the smaller man will uh, not come into play as much. That has usually been the case in the past, uh, but this generation somehow that changed. Um, so having said that, um, I first noticed when it came to Crawford, uh, when he fought Jeff Horn, I thought Jeff Horn was going to be very, very physical and give him a lot of problems. And Crawford having been an ex-lightweight champion, Horn having been fighting as high as a uh, super welterweight, I thought the physicality of Horn may have given him problems. But when I saw Crawford handle that, it made me think, okay, you know what? Uh, the the skills are there. He's he's uh, obviously filled in somehow into a, a bigger weight class, and um, you know he's uh, the, the the physicality of a bigger man is not going to bother him. I do think Porter is also a bigger man, much in the same way of Horn, except I think Porter is a bit more skilled in the inten- along with having that intensity. But if I'm going to make a comparison, I'd probably go with the Jeff Horn fight and, and tell you that Crawford most likely can handle this because of the way I saw him handle Horn. Now, maybe a little bit more problems as, as Porter is, uh, I, you know, you probably rate Porter a little better than Horn, even though Horn is a good fighter. Um, but I'd still, I'd still have to predict uh, Crawford coming through. For a long time, uh, we, we heard you calling fights uh, for Showtime. I'm just curious, do you miss calling fights for Showtime and, and any regrets with the way that kind of si- that situation played out? Um, I, uh, I still call fights here and there. It's, it's always, I always enjoy calling fights. Um, and I'm, uh, I, I'm in talks with uh, some people. You'll still probably see me back in the business soon. Um, 
it, it was fun. You know, it was a, it was a good time. Um, and I, I learned many, many things through those years, you know, especially the fact that, you know, I, I was able to polish up my already talkative skills, you know, and actually get it together and, and, you know, know how to, you know, actually do a broadcast and work with some great professionals. I mean, I work with some really good pros there because when you work with a, a a network that's that elite and has been in the sport for so long you know you're working with the best of the best so you kind of taken you kind of taken uh something off of the guys that you're working with so you know i worked with a, a good a good team there and um met some good people and um I, it was a very professional uh atmosphere and what's the best way i can put it basically I don't think I would have gotten as good. I, I listen. I, I I understand. I have a natural talent for commentating. I don't think I would have gotten as good so fast if it wasn't for the pros there that helped me and work and in working there. But having said that, the way it ended, I thought was very disrespectful to me. Um, I wouldn't go work there again if it was the last job on earth. It's it's uh, not fantastic. that it matters because it wouldn't be offered to me. Don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't go ever go work there again. Nor would I ever work with uh, the people that were in charge of it. it. It's a fantastic broadcast team. Some, some pros, pros there on the, the Showtime uh, announced team. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and I was able to learn a lot because those guys really, really, uh, it was, uh, those years were um, a real positive uh, for me. And so just to close it out, uh, tomorrow night, you're fighting celebrity boxing. It's uh, against Corey B. It's on Fight TV. Uh, what would be your, your final message to your fans and supporters? Um, check, you know, here's what I'm going to say about the fight. Order the fight. Fight TV, F-I-T-E TV, right? Order the fight on Fight TV. It's not going to be your typical boxing broadcast. It is a, it has a little bit of a sideshow-esque appeal to it. Um, there's a lot of fights because the fights are short. So there's a lot of fights. The schedule, the scheduled amount of rounds in each fight is very short and the rounds are shorter. So it's quick. It's uh, a lot of action. Most of the guys can't fight. It's celebrities you're going to recognize. It's different personalities, some very extreme personalities, I mean, there's a fight on this undercard with two reality show guys. Uh, one guy was named with Strikes, who was basically like a, a cholo gangster from California. He's got like a million Instagram followers. And another kid, um, uh, not, not another kid, uh, I don't know, I think he's from MTV or something, Holy Paul. And these guys went at it at the press conference six weeks ago. I mean, they started coming to blows. They went at it. So it's funny because I'm on the show and I'm like, I want to see these two guys fight. <laughs> I can't. I want to watch these two guys fight. So I think there's, there's a lot of um, uh, interesting personality clashes. And I think, uh, like I said, the sideshow effect of it has uh, uh, an appeal to it. I, speak, I think for this generation, plus it's instant gratification, short fights, quick blows. I think it's a fun time. I'd say you order the fight, not just for me. I think just out of the, get the curiosity out of your head. And uh, I think it's, uh, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be funny for anybody that watches it and they'll enjoy it. And, and last question for you. I know you retired from professional boxing in 2017. We, we saw you in the bare knuckle fight against Artem. Now you're doing this celebrity fight. Do you think going forward, we're going to see you in, in, you know, different types of combat or what, what are you going to do going forward um, in terms of fighting? You know, I try not to, man. I try not to. It's just, you know, some things, just, things kind of fall on your lap and, um, you know, you kind of weigh the pros and cons of it. And you, you know, you also weigh if you have the time, you know, like now, like, you know, because I wasn't working as much this, this time, I got time on my hands and what I'm going to do. And, you know, this kind of fell into my lap. What I like to keep doing, keep doing even these little fights, I, listen, they're less dangerous, but you're still, you know, you're still going to put yourself in there. And I, I, ideally, I'd like not to, but I, you may see me once or twice again. Who knows, man? You know, like, I'm still, I, I'm, I'm, I won't be 41 until the end of the year. I'm still relatively young in terms of that, that uh, in terms of the senior circuit age. Um, so I'm not sure, man. You know, I... It, things always fall on my lap. We'll see. You know, I say no right now, but then something's like some, something, some, something, something just comes into my lap, and maybe I say yes. So we'll see. I, I'm gonna attempt. I'm going to attempt to try to live a nice professional life and just commentate. I'm gonna attempt that, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But the next step is tomorrow night. Celebrity boxing. It's on Fight TV. Polly Malinaji versus Corey B. Polly, best of luck tomorrow, and I hope to talk to you soon. For sure, man. Good chat. Take care.